Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm excited about this one. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about how to not run out of things to practice. I know that's a situation for a lot of you all. You know, you practice one thing and it's like, okay, where do I go next? We're gonna be showing you how to switch up your practice routine in this lesson, but let's go. So if you've been following for a while, you may have seen this exercise. I've done it before way back. Um, it's actually the alternating arpeggio exercise going between the major and the minor seven arpeggio going up the scale. So for those of you who are new, I'm gonna show you really, really quick. It's a C major seven arpeggio and C minor seven arpeggio. C, E, G, B. That's the C major arpeggio, second finger, first, fourth, third. Then on the same key, on the same note, you do C minor, one, four, three, one, which is C, E flat, G, B flat, okay? So very quickly, the exercise was alternating between the two, the C major and the C minor arpeggio, all the way up to scale chromatically. So just for an example. You get the idea. So for that exercise, it's great for dexterity, uh, speed, and also strength. Uh, you're just going all the way up the neck chromatically, right, with the arpeggio. Plenty of different ways we can switch this up. We can go backwards, we can descend this, or we can uh, just only ascend this, uh, or we can just, just do major arpeggio or just minor arpeggio. So one of the ways that I wanted to show you is just uh, pick one arpeggio and move it up the scale. bit trickier the other one kind of fell right in your hands kind of fell right where your fingers are supposed to go or it's a little bit more comfortable to do that one but when you switch it up to just do major with the same exact fingering so major seven arpeggio all the way up and you see that I'm crossing with my second finger to start the next you get the idea? That's one way you can do it. Same way with the minor seven arpeggio. Now it's a lot trickier. <laughs> because you have to jump, you have to skip and you have to jump with that first finger and it's not natural. That movement is not natural. But that'll help you with your skipping. The other way that I talked about switching this up is descending this exercise. So you can only do major descending or you can only do minor descending or you can alternate the two just descending because we haven't done that yet either. So there's plenty of ways where you can switch up these exercises to where you're getting combinations of fingerings and shapes that you have never played before or that you're just not used to. And that's the whole idea. You have to be able to play something new uh, to be able to grow, to be able to play something you've never played before. So here's descending major seventh arpeggios, starting with C major. So for the descending exercise, you have to be careful and keep in mind that you're starting on the seventh note of that arpeggio or of that scale. So if I'm doing C arpeggio, the major seven arpeggio, I'm starting on a B. Okay, if I'm descending this. Same thing for the next one. I'm doing a C sharp major uh, seven arpeggio. I'm, I need to start on the C, the high C. So just keep in mind that's where your third finger needs to land. So same thing with the descending minor seven arpeggio. If you're playing the C minor seven arpeggio, you need to start, if you're descending, you need to start on that last note, which is that B flat. Okay. And here you're doing some skipping again. Okay, so it's a good exercise to be able to do what you've never done before. And I haven't done these in a while, uh, so I need to go back and practice these as well. But that's just something that'll keep your mind and your brain fresh. So the last way I talked about switching this exercise up was ascending and descending or descending and ascending, which doesn't matter which way you start, uh, just as long as you're alternating the two. So with major, we're gonna ascend and descend so we can... Okay, so you see what I did there? So I did went up major seven, I went down, I, I raised it, I modulated, it, went up, raised it a half step to C sharp. Next, D. Now, you just be conscious of where you're leaving off just to make sure you're playing that last note if you're descending that seventh note or the root note if you're ascending. So if you're doing that same thing with the minor, we're gonna ascend and then descend. Okay, so it actually works out pretty well. 
you just slide that first finger up a half step to get to the next minor seven arpeggio. And some of these sound really, really, really cool. And you can actually use those in your playing or maybe improv or as a lick or something like that. Combine the two or combine the three or four uh, to create some type of lick or riff. Um, it's awesome. It's endless possibilities. I mean, there's other ways too. I'm going to talk about that in a part two of this. And there's other ways to be able to switch this exercise up or any exercise up. And I'll show you guys in the next tutorial about what I'm talking about. All right, so check it out. Let me fill you in a little bit. Uh, don't think that just because you've learned an exercise and conquered an exercise that you can put it off to the side and forget about it. Just like I showed you, there's tons of ways to do one exercise. Uh, we just did it maybe 12 different ways. Okay, so just like with this particular exercise that we were doing, something as simple as an arpeggio, we were taking the minor seven and a major seven, flipping them back and forth. We were doing them different ways. We were doing just major, just minor, ascending, descending, so as you can see, you have no excuse whatsoever. Just challenge yourself and see what you can come up with.